You got to, if you go to Colorado, there's two plague poles there. One was the British tied up, and the British Uganda was tied, late, ready to go down. Midnight, 11:59, one minute to go. The parade commander give double salute, royal for Queen, for British, national for Uganda. British flag is up. They said royal and national salute. Present, hum, then rap, 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 rap. Then the band we playing the national British national anthem. The flag is still there. One minute to go. God save our gracious queen. Long live playing by the band. God Born in 1932 in Apache district, Musea Benego Rech joined the British Army Band in 1950 during the King's African Rifle. When the wind of change started looming in 1958, Abenego was Sergeant Major in the Army Band and was among the 240 band members who sounded the magnanimous anthems in 1962 that pulled down the Union Jack as the crane rose as a sign of sovereignty. Queen Midnight Oh, you got may God help all. That one is coming down and this one is going up. They all meet on the road. La, 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 la. Played or sang before and after official functions, the national anthem composed by George Wilberforce Kakoma was first played on October 9, 1962, during the Independence Day celebration. A national anthem is part of the paraphernalia of iconography that many of us inherited and regard as both normal and normative. Ding! The Uganda flag is down, up, the British down. That's how the thing And Then people were enjoying a lot of things. No, it's happy clapping and doing this. Midnight. Queen's husband, Phillips, was the one witnessing Hanover. A Benego and retired Colonel Tonotoa, who was then a student of Virika Fort Photo, shared their experience of this historical day. The system we inherited, to tell you the truth, that system was a system that worked. Civil servants were dedicated to their work by 8 o'clock. Every civil servant was in the office. And by that time we were working up to Saturday until Amin made it from Monday to Friday after the coup, 1971. Ban, there were only two ban, army ban and police ban. Both director of music were all Wazungu. And I was promoted to the rank of lieutenant, appointed director of music of the army. And Oduka was promoted to the director of music, police ban. So I recruited 180 and trained them for nine months in Kiraka. Then prison ban was established. And then I trained the Air Force ban for nine months and also was trained. Now we have got four security guards for security ban. Retired Colonel Tono Toanae clan head said the British left us responsibility and accountability which regrettably has been diluted. In those particular days, talks about corruption Except 1965, when there was these allegations by Cheng Dawidi about the gold that Amin brought during the civil war in Congo. That was the only time I heard about people taking money. Both Tony Otto and Abenego have sharp memories of the political instabilities of our country in which Abenego lost his right eye and survived assassination in 1972. He was saved by one lieutenant Abdullahi, a Lugbara friend, a few minutes before the trigger was pulled. Opened the gate and said, Director, you come and go so that man remove me. Then the, how I survived. There was no telephone. Malamungu was uh, GSO 1 operation and training. He was brigadier, radio call to all battalion Lango and actually clear them off from your barracks. And I was here that day. They appealed to the current so, politicians to scale down their political tones. Besides writing songs for Ugandan forces, Abenego has written many anthems for different institutions, including Lango Cultural Anthem and the Ugandan Kings and Chiefs Anthem. He retired from the army in 1980 and currently serving as a priest in the Pentecostal Church. Edi Ulua, UBC News.